Okay, last video for today is uh, we already looked at an array of structs, but how about arrays inside structs? So this means a struct data type that contains an array inside it. And once again, there's two ways to do it. We can either have heap-based or stack-based arrays inside our structs. Um, and they look differently in each case. So if we do stack-based, then what that ends up looking like is we have our, so let's say we have a, a struct that has like a number x, and so that might be like 15, and then it has an array um, of ints, and I'll just say it's one, two, three, four. So if we use stack base, so this data type for the picture that I just drew would be something like, um, and I don't have to give this struct a name, I'll just say that it has int x and array, um, int array of size four. Okay, so that's kind of a stack based array inside a struct. And it makes our structs get bigger because we have our arrays. If the array is big, then the struct is gonna be as big to store that whole thing. So we should think about copying might be kind of slow, et cetera, but it's very convenient because everything is all self-contained and there's no, um, there's no real pointers to have to deal with or think about. Then a lot of times, because of those limitations with stack based arrays, um, we might think about heap based arrays and so then what's the picture going to look like? Well, now when we use a heap based array, that means that our actual struct doesn't contain all of the data for the array, it just contains a pointer, right? So we would have something here like X, and then the array itself would just be a pointer, which we have to separately allocate so that that would then point to some array out in the heap. So what this would look like in terms of the struct declaration would be like struct um, with int x, same as before, but now it would be like int star array. And what I wanna emphasize again is that the calic for the array um, has to be separate. Right, so we can't like do this at the same time as we're declaring the struct very easily. We usually have to have a separate step to allocate that array. And that also means that whatever we have to use calic and it, we also have to free it up later. Um, so we have to kind of like remember about those things with heap based arrays inside struct. And there's one more, this is just bothering me that it's the wrong color. Um, let me see. There we go. There's one more thing that we have to think about carefully, and that's when we copy it. So if we make a copy of this heap based array with a point struct with a pointer inside it, then the other struct is just going to get a copy of the pointer, which is not what we want. So if we copy, so I'll, I'll use the fuchsia color to indicate that a copy is being made. So if we copy this one, what happens is we really just copy everything. So we would get a new struct that has X of 15 and a new array with the same things inside it, but, but a, a copy of everything. Whereas here, if we made a copy of this struct that I just drew with a heap based array, then yes, it would get its own copy of the variable X and it gets, technically it gets a copy of this array, but remember now this is just a pointer. So now it has a copy of the pointer, but the place the pointer points to is exactly the same. And so now there's a big problem probably is that both of these two different structs are pointing to the same array that might not be what we want. Um, so then we would have to reallocate a new array for the copy of the struct and copy everything over. Um, so as usual, the stack-based arrays are easier to deal with. And, and we do this with string types all the time inside structs like char name uh, 128 or something like that. But uh, sometimes we don't get that, we, we can't do this, like we might not know the size of the array in advance. This array syntax is more convenient. This array syntax is more flexible, but also has a few pitfalls that we have to keep track of.